Welcome to Electron Online. In our previous video, we came up with an equation that describes the existence of an electron in a box, and later on we'll can see how that will come up, how that will allow us to find the probability of where to find the electron in a box. We also realized that an electron in a box can be in different quantum states, and as you go up in the what we call the energy level of the electron, you can see that the wave motion of the electron looks a little different. The wavelengths become smaller, and of course, wavelengths become smaller, meaning the energy of the electron will then increase. But we want to now adapt our general equation into a specific equation for the different quantum states. Notice that in the lowest quantum state, n equals 1, the wavelength is twice the size of the box. If this is the length of the box, because we're talking about a one-dimensional box here, you can see that it's only a half a wavelength. So a full wavelength would be twice the length of the box. So here we can say that lambda is equal to 2L. Over here we can say that ah, the length of the box is equal to exactly one wavelength. So in this case we can say that the wavelength is equal to L. Or, we'll see in just a moment how we're going to adapt that equation a little bit. And finally, in the third energy level, we can see that the wavelength is equal to two-thirds of the length of the box. So lambda here is equal to two-thirds L. Now, what I could do is I could go ahead and put a 2 here and put a 2 in the denominator. So I'm going to make a, a small adjustment, put the 2 here and put the 2 there. Now, I, And then I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 over here. Now notice how the, the wavelength of the electron in the various energy states inside a one-dimensional box only changes by the denominator. Here the wavelength is 2L over 1. There, the wavelength is 2L over 2. There, lambda, the wavelength is 2L over 3, and so forth. And you can imagine that the next energy level, n equals 4, the wavelength will be 2L over 4, and so forth. So now that you know that, and you know that this number here corresponds to the energy level, 2 corresponds to 2, and 3 corresponds to 3, that the denominator in this equation simply corresponds to the energy level n. So in other words, we can then say in general that the wavelength of an electron in a one-dimensional box always will be equal to 2L divided by the energy level that it's in. And so that allows us then to adapt this equation by substituting for lambda 2L over the energy level, the quantum level N that it's in. Secondly, we should also replace K by what K is equal to, which is 2 pi over lambda. So let's do that first. So we can now say that the wave equation is going to be equal to a times the sine of, instead of k, we're going to write 2 pi over lambda, 2 pi over lambda times x. And then we're going to replace lambda by 2L over n. So we can say that the wavelength is equal to a times the sine of 2 pi x divided by lambda, which is 2L over n, we then see that the 2's can cancel, and the n and the denominator will go to the numerator. So we can say that the wavelength of x is equal to a times the sine of n pi x over l. And this now becomes the equation that describes the wave of an electron in a one-dimensional box for any energy state n, which is really nice, as a function of L, which is the size of the box, X, which is the position in the X direction where the electron will be, and then, of course, N would be the energy state. The only thing we don't know yet is the value for A. What is the amplitude of the wave? And, of course, even though this is a wave equation that would seem like it has a physical amplitude and would have a physical definition of where the electron is, that's a little bit of a misunderstanding of what that equation really represents. Later on, once we determine what a is equal to, and we start, we come up with the probability function, which is defined by this equation right here, we can then actually come up with a way to define where the elect what the probability will be where the electron can be. And that is ultimately what we want, because that ultimately will give us the ability to come up with the orbital shapes and the orbital positions of where the electrons can be in an atom. Now also, Realizing that this wave equation now really becomes a, an example of Schrodinger's equation, which is the scientist who came up with the methodology of defining the way in which small particles like electrons can exist even though they behave like waves. So we'll tie all that together in the next several videos.